Rabbit. We'll name him Frank. Frank? Frank, Frank the, the rabbit. rabbit. Okay. Rabbits are kind of cool. Uh, the meat's a lot like chicken, but it's a little it's a little more tender. The leg meat can be a little gamier, but not like lamb gamey, but just a little bit gamier than chicken. What's interesting about rabbits is most of the meat on this thing is better for braising or stewing or just making soup out of, except for the little tenderloin in here. Can you see that little tenderloin there? So a lot of really nice restaurants will go through the, the trouble of removing this tenderloin, which is super duper small, and then they'll actually, um, like Thomas Keller takes the rib bones from the rabbit, and he'll remove them, clean them up, and he'll stick them inside there and make little mini rabbit chops that uh, they'll roast off and then they'll serve at their, their restaurant. That's the only dry cooking uh, part. The rest of this really should be cooked with moist cooking or combination cooking. Um, Interesting stuff here. The arm isn't really connected to anything. There's no bone connection here. So this arm joint, the shoulder blade is just floating. And so you can basically go in here and just cut through and you're not gonna hit any bone. You're just gonna remove this thing and it just kind of floats in space. See what I mean? Wow. Kind of a random thing, right? So we'll take that off that side, this side as well. See the shoulder blade there? Just go behind that shoulder blade. Just cut that right off. See, I never hit a joint or anything. Floaty legs. Now, because today you're braising and stewing this, it doesn't matter what we do with the tenderloin, we're not taking it off, so we're just going to cut three pieces out of um, the saddle piece here after I take the legs off. The hip bones on the rabbit are really, really brittle, not like your chicken bones. So if I pull this down, it's already actually broken. You see the hip is broken there? Yeah. Um, so it takes a little bit of finagling here, but basically, go ahead and feel there, feel that hip bone. Okay, so I'm going to take the tip of the knife. Whenever you guys bone something, 95% of your cuts are done with the tip of the knife. Okay? I feel and then I cut. I feel and then I cut. I feel and then I cut. Feel, cut, feel, cut. I go down here. I can feel where the hip bone moves and comes out so I can run the knife right over that. Once I find the hip, I'm going to pop it out a joint. See it there? Okay? Take the tip of the knife, wiggle it in there. Find that joint of it. See the hole? Okay. When it, it's broken, it's a little harder to do this, but you can hold it down and you open it up. After that, take the knife in there, kind of wiggle it and push it towards the spinal cord. Okay. Up here, same thing, feel in there, cut that way, get in that gap, and just pull the leg off. As you cut, see how I'm pushing with the edge of the knife and stretching that, that leg muscle so that I can get all of it off on that. Okay. That's the leg. Same thing over here. Now this hip's in so I should have an easier time. So I'm just going to cut with the tip, cut with the tip. You notice how I feel each time before I cut. Pop the joint. Feel, cut. Feel, cut. Feel the hip going out there. Go ahead and feel there. See how it comes back out? So we just go around it. Okay, find that joint and expose it. It's already been popped, but we can't see it yet. There, you can see the gap, okay? See? Once you're in there, go ahead and feel and cut. Wiggle that knife through. And again, just like the other side, as I start to pull this, I'm gonna pull the leg away and stretch. Pull, stretch, pull, stretch. Okay, legs off. Now, three pieces. Here's your saddle. Here's the torso. The ribs come down really low, so we're gonna do an angle cut like this to the spinal cord, and we're gonna break the spinal cord in half. Once you do that, you have a gap, and you just cut through the gap. You may have to pop a rib bone to get it off. That's good stuff. Here's the saddle, and you see the tenderloin there. What we're gonna do is actually cut that right in half, because we're gonna braise this through this whole thing. We're gonna pop that off. See how we create a gap by breaking the spine? Cut through. You may have to turn your knife about 45 degrees to get through the gap that you made. Okay? These little flaps here are still meat, so you can season this up. You'll dredge this and then you'll brown it. Okay? Any questions? After it gets tender, you guys will shred the meat with two forks in a hotel pan and then uh, you braise it again. Okay. All right. Very good.